of faith and that confidence of devotion and that confidence of determination hold it hold on hold on to it hold it fast until it comes in verse 30 it says for ye have need of patience ye have need of perseverance ye have need of tenacity holding on there after ye have done the will of god that she might receive the promise for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry now the just shall live by by what tell me out loud anytime fear is coming in your heart you'll be wobbling anytime fear is coming upon your heart the fear of you know will they take this away from me will they keep it for to me where they keep it uh, for me anytime fear is coming you'll not walk straight you become unjust you know fear makes you unjust fear makes you sincere fear makes you hypocritical but it's faith that makes you sincere faith makes you honest you say what is mine will be mine and it doesn't matter what people say what people do where you want me to get to i will get there it doesn't matter what people say what people do my inheritance is mine my treasure is mine and all the provision of the lord has given to me they are mine when you're walking by faith you'll be just but you know when fear sets in like the children of israel they feared the egyptians at the red sea that's why they were crying the cry of unbelief and then when they came out and then there was no food to eat what shall we eat and they cried again the cry of unbelief and when the amalekites came against them and then they cried again look at it now look at the trouble we have the cry of unbelief in fact you know what the moabites the moabites it was a fight of unbelief why because the lord told moses said you see all those ammonites and the moabites you will not touch their property i have given their property unto them they're the descendants of lord therefore just go through their land don't touch anything belonging to them it is their inheritance but you know they lack walking by unbelief he went to hire balaam why not necessary already god had told moses he said don't touch anything belonging to the moabites and the ammonites but because of unbelief it was a fight of unbelief that that kind of exterminated and destroyed all those moabites but we why don't we believe in god what is mine is mine what is yours is yours what is ours is ours we don't have to change the bible we don't have to compromise we don't have to walk in unbelief the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back anybody going to draw back there i said anybody planning on drawing back there if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him but we are not of them who draw back i will not draw back we're not of them that draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul we believe we keep on believing and we're going to keep on believing to the very end in jesus name in first corinthians chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 24 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receives the prize so run that she may obtain and every man that striveth for the mastery every man that striveth for the mastery every man that striveth for the mastery you know what the lord wants he wants us to set our eyes on the mastery on excellence on perfection on getting to the very end and running the race courageously to the very end and you know there are some people that will say this is good enough how good is good enough how good is good enough when it's not excellent when it's not perfect when you are not walking by faith when you are wobbling when you're kind of distracted here and distracted here if this is good enough go to the very end and you're striving for the mastery you're striving for excellence you're striving for perfection and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate 
is controlled, is denying himself in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we, an incorruptible, I therefore so run. Not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. You know, sometimes uh, your body can rebel against you. You want to go this way, your mind is saying, there's a lion on the way. Bring that mind to, to subjection. You want to climb this mountain, and your mind is saying, if you try to climb that mountain, you will stop breathing by the, by the middle, because your strength cannot carry you through. You are going to bring that mind onto subjection. And sometimes you are running and running. And you are running a race. And then your leg is saying, hey, I am tired. And your back, the pain is there. And your back is saying, I'm collapsing. And your hands cannot move very well anymore. And your hands are telling you, you cannot keep on running like this. It's going to be terrible. It's when you bring everything to, to subjection. And you know, sometimes, uh, not just your body, it will be people. It will be people that, you know, will try to stop you and try to kind of stop your journey. You know, sometimes, as you look at these things that the Lord has brought away uh, this year, I've been to, you know, this country and that state and that place and that other place. And there was, a, there was a time, you know, just I came back from uh, one of these programs and somebody called from outside Nigeria. And I said, hello, how are you? Oh, he said, uh, Pastor, it uh, looks like uh, you're belaboring yourself. Your voice is not like it used to be. I said, why do you say that? And then he said, looks like, you know, too much pressure, too much activity. Why not slow down, Pastor? Because the way I hear your voice is like, you know, this is not you. I said, don't talk like that. Maybe it is your line over there. Maybe it's your service provider over there. The service provider from heaven is giving me all the strength I need. Don't worry about that. Praise the Lord. But you know, but you know what, I, what I'm telling you this is that another person phoned another hour from another place another place the same the same day and then i said hello how are you how are you doing there he said pastor what's wrong with your voice looks like your voice is not looks like uh, you need some rest i said how do you say that he said because it looks like you've been running up and down and your voice is not like it ought to be you know if i thought about what people say it will make me to say okay maybe what god wants me to do is too much Maybe the pressure is too much. Maybe like they are saying. And you know, the devil can orchestrate everything. This one saying, this one saying, this one saying, that one saying. And eventually you crumble. But it says, I bring all that under subjection. Whatever people say. However people comment. And whatever it is people are talking about. You bring it under subjection. But I keep under my body you'll keep it under subjection i said you'll keep it under subjection and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i appeal to others i myself should be a castaway you will not be a castaway you are going to run this way to the very end and the lord will help you in jesus name in first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 first timothy chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 15 first timothy chapter 4 verse 15 meditate upon these things give thyself holy to them that thy prophet may appear to all take heed to thyself the thoughts that come into you the ideas that come into you and the proposals your mind may be making change this a little adjust this a little touch this a little and then move this around a little and don't be as serious as you were before those thoughts will come but it says take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine continue in them all the doctrine all the doctrine all the doctrine 
you know, I travel around quite a lot. And I see what other Christians do. I see what other so-called believers, what they do. And I see some things they bring into their service and to their worship, which I don't find in the Word of God. And some of them sometimes, they're even so near familiar, friendly. And they say, hey, Pastor so-and-so, why don't you consider this and consider this? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You go your way. Maybe you have liberty to do that. I don't have liberty to do that. I don't have liberty to change the Bible, adjust the Bible, modify the Bible, mutilate the Bible. I want to stand by the Word. We're going to stand together on the Word to the very end in Jesus' name. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself. And them that hear thee. Point number two. Willfulness and exclusion of corrupted people. The willfulness of the children of Israel. The hard-heartedness of the children of Israel. And the hot heads of the children of Israel to exalt their own opinions above the doctrines of the Bible, above the wishes of the Lord, above the desires of the Lord. Willfulness, that means obstinacy, obstinacy, determination, determination to have their own way against and contrary to the way of the Lord. The willfulness that excluded them, those corrupted people. We're looking at First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the clouds and all passed through the sea, and they were all baptized unto Moses in the clouds and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Then it says, listen to this, but, but, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. They started right, they all came out, of the land of Egypt and as they were going on and going on and going on some things came in things that were not there before desires that were not there before ideas that were not there before idolatry raising up the car to worship that wasn't there before the dancing even naked among the children of Israel, when Moses went to the top of the mountain to collect the law, the dancing that wasn't there before, a lot of things that were not there before, all those things came in. And with many of them, God was not well pleased, but they were overthrown in the wilderness. They didn't get through until the promised land. You will get through. I said you will get through. You will be like Caleb. You will be like Joshua. With all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, you'll pull through in Jesus' name. Why were they overthrown in the wilderness? Verse 7, neither be ye idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither be idolaters. You know, there are people that will begin to use uh, what they call their common sense, corrupted sense. And they will say, food is food. Whether it is coming from the shrine, or it is coming from the French, or it's coming from your family, food is food. Common sense, corrupted sense. And they began to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. That's why God was not pleased with them. And they sat down to eat and to drink and to play. Then in verse 8, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. The people that are on, they are not married. Why are you not married? 
What does she get married? The Bible says to avoid fornication. Let everyone have his own wife. And let everyone have her own husband. And there are some people, they are proving that they are strong. And they are proving that they can hold themselves. And they say, wife, I don't need a wife. Husband, I don't need a husband. And in the secret, they commit fornication. Why do you want to fool yourself? And then go to hell. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither more more ye. Neither more more ye. Neither more more ye. You know, they murmured against God, against Moses, their leader. Uh, you know that there are things we never did we never we never did when we became christians never never murmuring against leadership in the church never i i know in my personal life and those who knew me when i was very young as a christian they will testify and when my pastor at that time when he was against me he didn't hide it I remember when in the church one Sunday morning and the preacher was preaching, he was unhappy with me. And you see, he was unhappy was because I knew how to play the keyboard. But it was the understanding in that church that if you are not saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you'll not be allowed to do any work in the church. You're not even cleaning the floor. And so I, you know, I done all my music and I done the theory, I done the practice. I could play the keyboard, all those things I could play. But I wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost at that time. I became baptized in the Holy Ghost 1974, the 23rd of October. But this was about 69, 1969. And then, you know, he was preaching and preaching and preaching. And then he mentioned my, he said, Kumui. Then I rose up, he said, sit down. They know book, they don't have Holy Ghost. And they know they know they can write with the leg and write with the hand, but they're not serious, and they're just there. Sit down. I didn't run away from the church because of that. That discipline was open, public, and he even mentioned my name. I even stood up and see maybe he wanted to ask me a question, and then he just said, you know, belittled me in the public like that. I didn't run away. If you're a real child of God, rebuke can come, correction can come, discipline can come. But you know, there are people today, they cannot bear anything. They'll be murmuring and murmuring. After we came out of that church that Sunday morning, I never said a word to my friend who was in the church with me that day. And our friend is still in that church, but he came to see me, I think, last month. I was still discussed together. And since that time, I never, never, never murmured about that pastor. You see, when you understand that this is what the Lord is calling you to, you're not going to be murmuring against your pastor, against your leader, against the overseer, against the general superintendent. You know, there are people that take laws into their hands. But it will make you to backslide. You will not backslide. I said you will not backslide. If there's anything you're doing for your pastor, it's praying for your pastor. And if I take any step, if I take any decision, don't understand? You want to more because of that? You just say, well, he's uh, older than we are. He knows the 